Hello everyone, welcome back to the stream, hope you folks are doing well and uh, hope you can see me and hear me. So this week we're at episode 8, um, which is exciting, we made a great progress so far and looking forward to making some more progress today. So last time we left off was the NTP problem, right? With the time. So we're going to check that, see if the time caught up finally, because we were like, what, 500 million seconds, microseconds behind <laughs> was, uh, was like six days behind. So we'll check that to see if the time is up to date, if NTP picked up. Uh, we also configured Ansible, right? We had our host vars, group vars, the host file with the two NXOS switches running in um, a DMZ uh, in CML. So we got Ansible working, or at least configured, right? And today, let's go ahead and check NTP first, see if it caught up, and then we'll go and cover Docker. Uh, and we'll talk about executors in GitLab because GitLab as part of the pipeline component can have, uh, you know, what, what they call executors. So these are what you want the pipeline to execute, to run in what type of environment. So for in our example here, we're going to have a Docker container, we're going to create a Docker image. We're going to upload it to Docker Hub. And then from there, we can pull it down as part of our pipeline. It could be cached. We can have versions of that image, of the Docker image, so on and so forth. So we'll, we'll have a look at that today. But Docker is one executor. So it would be a Docker container, right? The components that you want will have in there, we'll have Python we'll have uh, PyTS, which is the test framework. We're gonna have a look at that possibly today if we have time, we're gonna start uh, looking at PyTS. We're gonna have Ansible, right? As part of our Docker container. And that's pretty much it, right? We need Ansible, PyTS, um, Ansible to make the configuration changes, PyTS to take snapshots over infrastructure before and after the change. So those are the two main components that we need as part of our Docker uh, container and our Docker image. So Docker, like I was saying, is one example of an executor in GitLab, what they call. So this is like a, uh, an environment where you run your pipeline. Uh, you could have virtual machines, right? You could have a VM spun up uh, you could have integration with Kubernetes, you could have it run, uh, you know, a uh, bash shell script as an executor. So it's many, many options that you can have as part of GitLab and this executor component. Um, okay, so let's jump. Let's see, is anyone in the chat? Folks, a couple of folks over there. Thank you for joining. Um, if there's any questions, as usual, drop them in the chat over there. I'm going to check every once in a while to see if there's any questions coming up. Um, so let's get started then for today. Let me connect into a new window. I'm going to connect to my Santos box. Uh, where is it? Remote. It's this one. Connecting current window. Just gonna SSH into my CentOS VM and do my password. All right. So I'm connected. If I open folder, uh, remote is fine. Password. And there we go, we had here 
the OSPF configuration, the Ansible playbook for it, Ansible CFG. And actually you should be able to find all of this on GitHub. That's kind of how we wrapped up last time. So the CICD dash Twitch on AI DevNet, uh, you're gonna have all the, the files and folders. This is a public repo. So you can clone it if you want, you can uh, modify it as you see fit. All right, so let's give it a look. See, first of all, open the terminal, see what's the date. May 31st, 905.50. Cool, yes, so that's better. Uh, what else we have here? History of crony. Can I find that? Git clone. Commits. Okay, let me just look at a history. Let's see what we have here. Date. Uh, crony installed. Enable Docker, star Docker. Uh, okay, so maybe it was not saved. Let me quickly go CentOS 9 NTP. We had a look, where was it? Maybe it was this one. Uh, crony install status system ctl system ctl crony d status i'm not gonna need this for now uh, Our status <laughs> crony D uh, so it is loaded it's active is running uh, six days ago so we know it's running and then crony C sources Let me see sources. Okay, we have them. Uh, we seem to be synchronized with this, which is fine. Crony C tracking. So yes, this is our reference. Um, last offset system time. Offset frequency, residual skew is pretty low. Uh, Leap status no. Okay, so I mean, it works, right? So we have finally accurate date and time uh crony d is doing his job ntp is getting synced up so looks good all right so that's what i wanted to check and then next i wanted to go ahead and let's start having a look at docker all right so um gonna create a new file here it's gonna be a docker file uh, so this is the CICD twitch repo that I'm keeping um, synced up with github 
so you have access to it. So Docker file is basically a file that defines a Docker you could call a manifesto uh, or what a Docker image should have. All right, so we're gonna start with from Python and what version of Python? So I want 3.8. Uh, which is a bit older, but this is the one I've tested before. I know it works. I believe it's 3.11 right now. We'll just go with 3.8 for now. And then in this image with your Python 3.8 installation, I want to run up get update. I want to run uh, up get install. Telnet uh, for connection to our devices in CML. Telnet connection to, in case we need the iOS XC, so the CSR 1000Bs. I'm going to do a run pip install ansible. And I'm going to specify a version here. So I want to install 2.9.13. Pip install Paramico for SSH connections and I want 272 and I want to run Ansible Galaxy collection install Cisco and XOS. I want to install the Cisco Next OS um, Ansible collection. And then I want to run pip install PyTS full. I want to install the full version of PyTS, right? So I have a basic uh, Docker definition here in my Docker file. Um, right, I have, I'm doing a quick update, then installing Telnet, installing Ansible, Paramico for SSH connections from Python, then um, NXOS Ansible collection, and then PyTS, the full version of PyTS. That's pretty much it. So let me save this, have my Docker file defined. Well, let me see, where am I here, Docker. Let's change it to source, CICD Twitch, and I have my Docker file right here. And now let's build an image out of this. So if I do Docker, I don't have permission, even to list. So I have right now three images, right? I have my GitLab runner, uh, my GitLab community edition, and then the hello world that we pulled when we installed Docker uh, almost two months now. We're on episode eight, believe it or not. <laughs> but we made some good progress. So um, you see here, right? I have three images. Um, and I'm gonna create one more, All right? So I'm gonna create, based on this Docker file that we just created, I'm gonna create an image out of it, and I'm gonna see if I can upload it to Docker Hub, so I can use it as part of my pipeline after that. If I do Docker build here, I don't have permission. If I do a sudo, Okay, so there we go. Python 3.8. Task one out of seven. It shows here. All right, so it's gonna do an app get update as step two, then install Telnet, app get update right here. Install Telnet, installing Telnet. 
um, installing Ansible. Oops. Exit code one. Ah, right. Uh, it should be like that. Is that a valid operator? Did you mean double equal? Yes. So let me save this. The image has filled, hasn't been um, created successfully, which is fine. Okay, so Docker build. The nice thing with Docker is that you can just destroy your image, recreate it pretty fast, right? If any updates or you need to change something, just destroy, create a new one. Within seconds comes up, you're ready to go, right? Don't need to worry too much. Um, if something broke or you know, something's not working, just modify it, add a quick change as part of your troubleshooting and you should be good to go. Okay, so it's installing Ansible, that's, done paramico and then the cisco nx os collection and we're gonna use that as you remember as part of our ansible playbook right we're using the nx os collection so we're doing those commands to configure our spf right that um, that the playbook that we've built last week all right so while this is running let me see. Um, how's it going? Step six out of seven. And then we're going to install PyTS. And that would basically be the image that we can take. There we go. Install PyTS. So we have part of this image of all the components for our pipeline. The two main important ones, Ansible and PyTS, right? So now we're gonna use this image. We're gonna put it in Docker Hub. And see, I'm logged in here. Where do we my account? Uh, I do have uh, a repo here that I call CICD-EN and I have my image is pretty much the same thing that we've done. So I have Ansible 293, 2913, Paramico 272, PyTS full, right? So it's pretty much the same image. I have version 0 0.1.0. This is the tag. Um, if you update this and you have Python 3.11, right? And you have uh, updated versions for uh, your software here, you can create a 0 0.2 or when you're ready, it's a 1.0 release for your image, whatever the case may be. So let's see, okay, so image, exporting to image, exporting layers, writing image, here we go. So the image has been created, right, with all my tools. So if I do an uh, LS, there we go, 30 seconds ago. Um, image ID, I know that is pretty much the exact same first, whatever, 10, 12, characters here as my shot 256 signature so the same image so i could take this image and upload it to docker hub like i said i already have it in here uh so i'm not gonna do that anymore but this is the image that i'm gonna use as part of my pipeline right uh Quick recap, Docker file, we created a Docker file with this uh, definitions of what we have, what we want to have as part of that image. We created the image, then you upload it, you create a um, new repository here, you can create a new repository, uh, give it a name, description, if it's public or private, 
uh, using zero one private uh, you can push an image to the project using a CLI so you can do docker tag local image and then docker push uh, with your desired image repository tag let's let's give it a try so we're going to do CICD twitch it's going to be public and I'm going to create it to push a new tag to this repository um, all right so let's see add a shortcut description it's a public view to push manually publishing images, connect your account to GitHub or Bitbucket to automatically build and tag new images. Uh, so where's the tags? Build. We don't have any collaborators. There's nobody. This is, I don't have any uh, webhook set up. And settings. There's nothing as of now. So I have now two repos. All right. And let me just go and do this command to tag the image from the CLI. Uh, Docker tag. And local image is this doesn't have any tag currently and I wanted new repo be Adriani CICD Twitch uh, zero point one Permission denied. Let's go do a pseudo. Okay. List images. Okay, so I see repository, tag, and then if I do a Docker push, sudo Docker push. Adriani. CICD Twitch. Uh, let's see what happened here. If I go back to repository, last push three minutes ago, build tags there's nothing uh, right so let's see tag does not exist using default tag um, the push refers to repository docker.io adriani cicd twitch yes Zero dot one request access to the resource is denied. Uh, probably because I'm not logged in. So let's see if I docker help. Uh -huh. Attach commit. Copy, create a new container, history, import, inspect, load, logs, pause, port, rename, remove, save, start, stop. Uh, okay, so let me see. Docker push.
access access to the resource is denied. Docker login. Okay, so let's do a Docker login. Adriani. Login with Docker to push and pull images from Docker Hub. If you don't have, head over to to create one. Okay, so I have an account. Sudo. Login succeeded. Uh, configure credentials. Uh, and then let's try to push again. Okay, so now it's going, it's working, right? I just needed to log in, do a Docker login. And um, it's pushing the image. So now let's go back to C. Builds tags. Uh, it's going to take a bit of time for the image to get pushed. Uh, but uh, that's pretty much it, right? You have your Docker file. We created the Docker image. And now you have the image, you can start a container based on that image, right? Um, so we might actually do that next once this is updated and uploaded, Docker Hub, just instantiate a container from that image and see if you can connect to it, run a couple of commands as we're going to do next, we're going to have a look at the, um, at the Docker container for our CICD pipeline. Let me see if there's any questions in here. I don't see any. I hope you folks can hear me and, uh, and see me well. Uh, so this seems to be taking a bit of time here. Come on. What's going on? It's way too slow. Let's find that to a connection. Not good. a quick ping at Google. Uh, okay, there's not don't see any package dropped. But this seems to be pretty slow. Uh, okay, so I mean, I'll leave that running in the background and go in another terminal here and uh, switch. We have a Docker file in there so we can look at Docker PS. We have our two images. Two containers running. And then let's see if I can run help. So with Docker run, just be able to specify the image. Yeah. So Docker image list all 
and then docker run image ID is not this let's see Okay, so we see distracted Poitras exited zero six seconds ago. So it exited right away. So if I do Docker logs. Container ID is this. What about the logs on the other one? Configuration loaded. Okay, so Docker logs. It's not running. But I see the image it exited about a minute ago. Command Python 3. Um, so the image is there. Container ID. There's no ports exposed, which is fine. We have any logs? No logs. Okay, so um, damage seems to run, but it exits right away. Uh, Docker run volume host name strings are just options to pass in uh, create a run because you an image attach list host let's see verbose oh, I don't want the demon I just want an image um, docker run let's see an example of a docker run Docker run name test thirteen full container capabilities Docker run Ubuntu set working directory set storage driver mount volume uh no bind publish or expose ports don't care about that set environment variables no connect the container to a network no uh but let's see the first option that was right here 
container name test using the bin latest. So let's do our Docker run name, call it test CICD. And the image, we put the image ID is this. Okay. So it started the container and it put us 3816. Uh, so from here, if I do import Paramico, Uh, uh, it worked, so Paramico is there. If I do an exit, it pulled me all the way to localhost. Okay, so we dropped me into a... interactive terminal here for that image, right? So if I do a docker ps-a, it should show me my... Uh, test CICD image right here, well, container 51 seconds ago, it's a Python 3. So with the eye, I made it an interactive, so the image was running, I was able to connect to it. You get a Python shell and you can run your Python code in there. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, it's very slow, so it's still pushing. I'm not sure why. Um, all right, so we had a look at Docker, uh, we built the image, we started the container using that image. Um, what else can we do in here? Um, today we still have time. We're probably I showed you Docker Hub and the image is slowly being pushed to Docker Hub. It's uh, kind of too slow here. It's gonna take a while. Um, but we'll leave it going in the background. All right, so next we've done Ansible, right, the previous week. Let's start having a look at PyTS then. Um, so Cisco PyTS, it's a testing framework, right? Um, and you can use it for many different purposes, but what I'm going to use that as part of, my, of uh, the pipeline here is that I'm going to take snapshots of my infrastructure before and after I apply a configuration change. So I'm going to take a snapshot of my OSPF neighbors and my OSPF routes, right? Making sure that I have that information saved. Then I'm going to perform in the second stage of the pipeline the configuration change by running that Ansible playbook we've developed last week. And then stage three would be another PyTS snapshot, making sure that the changes that I've done, so the, the routes that I'm advertising, the new OSPF routes are in the routing table, they're propagated between the neighbors, and that's how I would know that the test ran successfully because uh, the routes have been propagated. Right, so snapshot before the change, taking a snapshot of the infrastructure, operational parameters, then stage two, I'm gonna perform the configuration change with Ansible, the playbook we've built, and then stage three, we're gonna take this now, the snapshot with PyTS, making sure that the changes have been successfully completed. So PyTS, you've seen um, here, is just a pip install PyTS full. 
Um, and you can see it's currently used the factor test framework for internal Cisco engineers across different platforms, functions, running millions of CSD pipelines, sanity regression scale, test on a monthly basis. So it's been, and it, it's extensively used within Cisco itself for testing purposes, for building pipelines like the one we're building now. Um, and it's also used by developers and network folks outside of Cisco. Um, has different components. It's agnostic by design. Out of the box, it comes libraries that support Cisco iOS, XC, XR, and XOS, ASA, so on and so forth, and allows device connections through CLI, NetConf, or RESTConf. We're going to connect um, using CLI, Telnet, and SSH to our devices. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so let's start and configure PyTS, right? Uh, going back to this, I'm going to create a new folder in here and I'm going to call it PyTS. So in PyTS uh, folder, I'm going to have several different files as we start building our test environment. So let me go ahead and create a YAML file in here. So we're going to create a new file. going to call it test environment.yaml so this would be our test environment and that will have the following components Testbed, name, we're going to call it test EMV, credentials that we're going to use to connect to the devices, are going to be username Cisco. Password Cisco, that's the account we have set up on our devices. And then we're going to start populating the devices list. So our distribution router 01 is an iOS XC. So this is the CSR 1000V. connections how we're going to connect to it via telnet and then telnet we're going to specify the ip address 10 10 20 175 um Port 23 for Telnet, protocol, Telnet. All right, so this is our first device. Our CSR 1000V, I'm just going to copy this for distribution router 2. going to be 176. And also going to create our Nexus switches. So these are the CSR 1000V 
and then our distribution switch zero one uh, OS it's NX OS type NX OS connection default via SSH for our Nexus switches and then SSH parameters would be IP 10 10 21 77 port 22 protocol SSH SSH same thing with our switch too. I'll just copy this. NXOS 178. I have the credentials. So this is my test environment, right? That I will pass into PyTS. He these are the devices that will be as part of my test environment have the IP addresses, how connected them, and then credentials. Okay, so let's save this. And let me make sure I have the right IP addresses. Before connecting quick. Connecting to my uh, lab environment. There we go. And 10, 10, 33. Log in. I have my lab. I have my devices. Open the console. 10, 10, 10, 177. Um, 10, 10, 10, 175. Okay. So I'm glad I checked this because here it should be 10, 10, 10, and 10. Okay. Test environment done. Next, we're going to create uh the job that py uh, python file that will contain the code for running the pyts job so we're going to do a new file we're going to call it job.py and this is going to have following code uh, trigger group NXOS right so testpad G run will basically run um, the tests defined in a couple of YAML files that we're going to define now so we want to define uh, what tests to run before and after the change is configured. Right, so we're going to have two YAML file definitions um, for our pre-configuration and post-configuration tests that we want to run with PyTS. So basically with the G run here, we're telling uh, in this job, hey, look for the YAML files um, in this uh, in this path where you are, where you're running the script now and, uh, look for NXOS OS, uh, in there, because we're going to look for our Nexus, uh, switches. So the subsection data file, 
gonna create one more file in here. This subsection data file.yaml. So it's gonna be a new file. New file. Subsection data file.yaml. And in this, we're just gonna define um, the method we're using to connect to the devices, which is genie.harness.commons.connect and order is connect and then clean up, right? It's just specifying using genie to connect to the devices and genie is a component of PyTS that's used for connecting to devices. So let me save this, the subsection data file uh, that we specified here. And then the test path would be, we're gonna create a new file here. And we're gonna call it pre-trigger data file.yaml. And we're gonna create another file, post trigger data file.yaml. So these YAML files will contain the actual tests, what PyTS will do as part of the pre and post snapshot test that she's gonna run. Okay, so the pre trigger data file. Uh, will contain quite a bit of information. So we're gonna start at the top variables, device one will be our distribution switch zero one, device two will be our distribution switch zero two. And then we have the pre Snapshot section, snapshots. And in here, we're gonna target the group of devices called NXOS. And the source, package source will be Genie. And the class from there will be triggers, blitz, and now for the text sections, these are the sections that we want uh, PyTS to perform. These are the tests that we want uh, and the snapshot that we want PyTS to perform for us. So we're gonna do verify OSPF neighborships. Do it in parallel. So connect to multiple devices at the same time. Parse. So here, I wanted to parse each device. And here we're gonna define, because we uh, parse device one, B, parse device one. The command that we want to run is show IP OSPF neighbors detail. And then we want to make sure that it contains contains the following key value.
neighbors and 172.16.252.25 and this would be on device one on switch one so let's quickly check on switch one uh, switch one show IP OSPF neighbors detail this is the command we want to run and we want to make sure that the 25 uh, which is where is it we see the 33 neighbor to hold on it has to be more than this twenty five and thirty three so this is learned by interface eth one four eth one four is distribution router two so this should be what's going on here show ip or spf neighbor gigabit 5 and then gigabit 6 but i don't have it on gigabit 4 it's not established gigabit 4 IP address distribution router. So there's the neighborship here. There's a problem between router one and switch one, which is good that we looked into because I need to troubleshoot this. But this will be in our next edition. Next week, um, we're going to pause. I'm going to be at Cisco Live um, in Vegas. Cisco Live US 2023 takes place in Las Vegas uh, next week. So I will be um, at the Mendeley Convention Center over there all of next week in the DevNet Zone. Have a bunch of sessions, presentations, both workshops, classroom sessions. Um, I'm super excited to go back to Vegas. Uh, is the first Vegas trip this year. I think they're going to be also the sales conference later this year that I might be uh, going to that one too. But I'm super excited to be going there. Have a bunch of sessions. Looking forward to meeting a lot of people. Um, we'll be in the DevNet zone all week. So if you are there, uh, if you want to catch up, say hi, please do so. Stop by the DevNet zone. Uh, look up for me. I'm going to be there, like I said, all week. Looking forward to meeting you folks, talking with you if you have any questions. Um, make sure if you want to attend my sessions. If there's still spots, I have three workshops. It's going to be really cool. We have Open API with SD-WAN. We have DNA Center SDK. So it's going to be really cool. We're going to make some sessions on those also once we finish with CICD. So really cool stuff coming up. Uh, but next week, like I was saying, we're gonna take. Uh, we're not gonna have the stream going, but we're gonna pick up the week after that, um, and we'll continue this. We'll finish up PyTS. Troubleshoot what's going on here with the OSPF neighbors between router one and switch one. Uh, so that's coming up not next week, but the week after. Quick recap: Docker file. Let me just quickly see where we stand. Uh, is it still uploading? Still uploading. It's uh, pushing very slow, very slow. Uh, but we'll check on that one too. Make sure that it got pushed. I'll show you the image and then we'll finish by it. Yes. Uh, next time I see you. Thanks everyone for, for joining. Hope this has been useful for you. Any questions or anything, let me know. Um, thank you. And we'll pick up next time. Uh, with PyTS and hopefully wrap up PyTS next time and then we can kind of start bringing everything together. 
Thanks everyone. Take care and see you on the next one.